Hello everyone, Cindy here with Monarch Mom DIY. Thank you so much for joining me today on my channel where I love to bring you the best tips and tools for creating beautiful home decor on a budget. Today in this video, I'm gonna share with you six high-end spring farmhouse home decor DIYs. So let's get started. For our first project today, we're going to take one of these mason jar signs from Dollar Tree and give it a makeover using some scrapbook paper and one of my Magnolia stencils. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove the jute twine from the top and then taking my little mini scraper from Walmart, I'm just scraping off the raised glitter that's on the front side. I really was going through my scrapbooking paper stack if you don't have one of those, you can look at Hobby Lobby or Michaels. Even Walmart has some scrapbook paper pads. And I really liked this piece for spring that had the flowers at the top. So once I cut it um, just a little bit larger than the mason jar sign, I put a layer of matte finish Mod Podge and then I'm just um, laying down my scrapbook paper and smoothing it out to make sure there's no air bubbles caught underneath. I did put a layer of Mod Podge over the top as well and then let that dry completely. Then using my Fiskars fingertip knife, I'm just going around the edges and this does a really great job of cleaning up those edges. Everybody asks me where I get this. It is linked in my Amazon storefront. You can find the website for that in the description box. Also this little finger sander, I go around the edges. Now, if you don't have stencils, you can, these are some other options, use Woodwords from Dollar Tree, or these Woodward stickers are from Hobby Lobby. But I decided to use one of my new stencils from Magnolia. I'm just going to use the words, Be Kind, even though I am going to be using this Boho Rainbow coming up soon in a project. I'm gonna go ahead and fuzz the entire stencil so that it doesn't stick too much to my project and then possibly stretch when I lift it up. I'm gonna start with the word kind, and I'm just putting this a little bit above the bottom of my jar, smooth it out, and then using some of my coal black chalk paste from Magnolia, I'm just gently with the squeegee pressing the chalk paste into the mesh stencil, and we will get a nice crisp um, transfer of the word kind. Then the peel and reveal is so rewarding to see the nice impression that you get from these mesh stencils. I'm gonna dry that a little bit with my heat gun and then we'll come back with our stencil and get the word B above the word kind. And we're going to put this on the exact same way, lining it up where we want it, smooth it out, and then use some of the chalk paste to transfer that word also to our sign. Once our chalk paste is dry, I'm going to take some new jute twine, hot gluing it to the back of the mason jar. Then I'm gonna just wrap it around a few times where the little metal uh, topper meets the rest of the jar. We'll go around about four or five times, then trim it and hot glue that end also to the back of the jar. I decided to add a little bit of wood beads, so taking another length of the jute twine. I'm just gonna string three of these wood beads. These were in a variety pack that I ordered off Amazon that is also linked in my Amazon storefront under favorite DIY crafting supplies. These are probably, I would call them a medium size bead, not too big and not the smallest ones. So I just put three on there, tied a knot at the end, and then the top end of the string, I'm gonna wrap around um, or tie it actually around some of the strings that I wrapped, just so it kind of hangs down a little bit. Trim that edge and then with a little bit more jute twine, wrapping it around three fingers, about five times, um, we're going to tie that in the middle, 
to make a little jute twine bow and we'll glue this over there to the left kind of right on top of where the um, beads are hanging down from these are really simple to make and um, just kind of dress up your project with a little bit more farmhouse texture and style and that's our last step for this project i love how it turned out you can do this with any colors to match your color scheme If you're new to my channel today, stopping by for the first time, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. Please consider sticking around by hitting that subscribe button. And also make sure to hit the notification bell and choose which level of notifications you prefer from YouTube. If you are a returning viewer or subscriber, welcome back. I appreciate you so much and your support of my channel. DIY number two makes me so happy and so ready for spring. I'm gonna use three of these wood birdhouses, three of the wood crates from Dollar Tree, and some six inch wood dowels. Now I'm going to first be um, painting my three crates with my white Waverly chalk paint. I'm just going to do the fronts and backs of all of them, and then just the sides of, um, the outer two, just the side that will be seen once we glue these together, if that makes sense. I think it will in a minute. I'm also going to do that top edge on all three of them and just getting these painted so that we can then glue them together. Now my three birdhouses originally came from Michael's, but I know you can get these at Dollar Tree. I know Walmart also sells them in their craft section, but I'm going to paint this first one with this beautiful pink from Waverly. It's called Ballet Slipper. And on all three of the birdhouses, I'm painting the, the house part with the color also underneath the roof and the little top of the ledge at the bottom, if that makes sense. So he, see, you can see that I'm doing the color also on the underside of the roof. Um, that second house is the color pool, and then my third house is going to be white. These three colors are kind of gonna be our theme, our color scheme for this video. And then I am gonna come back to my crates and I'm just gonna go around the inside, just that top layer because it might be seen um, at the end of our project. The White House, I am doing a blue roof and blue around the edge of the base. And then my pink house and my blue house, I'm using white for the roof and for around the um, edges. So you're just going to see little clips of me doing my painting until everything is all done. Sometimes I get questions about these um, paintbrushes that I'm using. These are made by the company Plaid and they are in the Walmart craft section right above the Waverly chalk paint, at least in my store. Now these wood dowels were six inches and I wanted my three birdhouses to be at three different heights. So I'm cutting one of my dowels in half at three inches so that one birdhouse can be one dowel high, so six inches. One will be two dowels high for 12 inches and one will be one and a half dowels high for nine inches. I'm just using a little bit of my tight, blonde, tight bond wood glue that's a mouthful, to glue my dowel pieces together. And I was thinking that I might have to wrap some jute twine also around where they were glued together, but these were not um, coming apart. This was really strong. Once those were dry, I'm gonna give those a coat of my Waverly chalk paint in the color ink. My technique for this is I do half of the stick and then set the unpainted side down in like a little glass jar until it's dry. Here you can see now I am gluing my three crates together. I'm gonna use these clamps from Dollar Tree. I probably use these in every single video because they're so handy. And we will just let that dry so that it will now be one uh, long crate. Coming back now to my birdhouses, I'm gonna use this little stencil 
Um, from Magnolia, it says home sweet home, but I'm gonna do something a little different with it. If you don't have a stencil or aren't interested in purchasing that, um, you could definitely write these words with a black paint marker. I just like the uh, look here of this stencil and thought I would give it a try. So my pink house is going to say home. So I'm just going to use chalk paste on this one word and then we'll peel that up to reveal the word. Now on the middle one, the middle word on the stencil is sweet, but my idea here was to use all of the letters except for the S, all right? Because I thought how fun, these are birdhouses. I wanted to say home, tweet home. So I'm gonna let wheat dry while I do home on the blue house. And then we're gonna come back to the white house and we're gonna put the T that was at the end of the word at the beginning of the word. So it will say home, tweet home. You'll see what I mean here in just a second as I bring that house back over. And now I'm lining up that T to be in the place where the S was and we'll get that on there. Now I'm gonna use some super glue gel from Dollar Tree and combine that with some hot glue. And we're going to glue these dowels to the base of our birdhouses. Now coming back to our crates, I am going to hot glue a small piece of floral foam into the base there. This is gonna give us some stability for not only our birdhouses, but also a little bit of greenery. Um, that we're going to add to the base. So my tallest birdhouse is my white one that says tweet, I'm putting that down into the foam, then home and home on either side of that. I did not hot glue moss to my floral foam. There you can see our houses at three different sizes, but I am going to take apart some of this greenery that I have and I'm just going to poke it into the floral foam, also into the spaces there in the crates. And we're just going to finish off this project and I'm in love with how this looks. It's big and I love all the greenery there at the bottom. You can also see that I did take a thin burlap type ribbon and glue that just loosely around the side of the crates. DIY number three is a shiplap looking stenciled sign. This is one of my favorite things to do with really cool frames. I love this old barnwood looking frame that I found at a thrift store. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take nine of these one gallon paint sticks. That's how many I needed to go all the way across the back. And just marking one of them where I need to cut it, we're gonna go ahead with our miter box and our saw, and we're going to trim all nine of these one gallon paint sticks to be the right size. Now, I really liked this dark gray, this elephant for the background of my picture. So I'm going to paint all nine of my paint sticks with this dark gray called Elephant from Waverly. Now this is the back of my frame, just using some hot glue. I'm going to glue these paint sticks that are painted gray on the front, all the way across, going all the way up our frame. And this is gonna give us a really cool looking background that we will then stencil a really cool image on. Once all the paint stick pieces are glued across, you can see what it looks like. I did sand my pieces a little bit and that helped get a little more um, texture and a little more of the natural wood color. And then before I stencil on this, um, on the paint sticks, I am going to apply one layer of the matte finish Mod Podge. This is just going to help give us a more uh, crisp design when we use our stencil. Now you can attach anything you want to the front of this sign. I really love this stencil. 
I think it's about a six by nine size stencil. It says, with God, all things are possible. And for kind of the spring theme of this video, I really liked the flowers. And I am gonna pull in the pink and the blue um, and the white that we've been using so far in this video. So once I get my stencil centered, I'm just gonna press it down to make sure I'm gonna get as crisp a design as possible. Using my white chalk paste, I'm gonna do this for all the words on our stencil. So I'm gonna do that first. Sorry, not all the words. I'm going to leave the Bible reference that I'm actually gonna do in a different color, which is this blue, I think it's called blue ice. Um, I'm gonna do the Matthew reference. I'm also going to do a few of the flowers with this blue. And then I'm going to use um, a pink that I believe is called Sugar Plum. I'll have all these names in the description box below the video. And I'm gonna do then some pink flowers as well. Then lastly, for the leaves, I'm using this paintbrush squeegee and our magnolia green color to get into those small spaces where the leaves and stems are. And then we get my favorite part, the peel and reveal, to see this beautiful stencil and how it turned out on our paint stick background. So beautiful, I absolutely love it. I encourage you when you go to thrift stores, always look for frames. This one I was so excited to find and I actually found a second one, so I can't wait to see what I'm gonna do with that one. You can find links to my Amazon storefront, my Magnolia Design Company website, and any of the tools and supplies that I use down in the description box below the video title. Lanterns are super popular. I'm gonna show you how to make a real simple one using two wood trays from Dollar Tree and some tumbling tower blocks. If you can't find tumbling tower blocks, you could do this same idea with some wood dowels from either Walmart or Dollar Tree. So with the tumbling tower blocks, it does take a little bit longer. I decided to make my lantern about seven blocks tall. It would be fun to make maybe one or two more that had different different heights and kind of display them all three together. But for me, I'm doing seven tumbling tower blocks. I'm wood gluing them together. And then I'm actually going to make a second layer on top of that. And this will make my four posts of my lantern kind of square instead of um, more flat on one side. So here you'll see, I'm gonna do my seven all together, and then I'm gonna start layering that second layer on top, and I will wood glue these on as well. So we're gonna use 14 tumbling tower blocks for each corner, and we're gonna do that four times. Once those were dry, I did sand them a little bit in case any glue came through the cracks. And then I'm going to paint them with my Waverly chalk paint in the color ink or black. And then let those dry completely as well. I kinda like to do one side and then go down the sides a little bit, let that dry and then flip them over and do it again. Now I'm using two of the trays that have stars in them. Um, you could do the ones that just have the little notch. It doesn't really matter. Um, but I am going to use the antique wax on my two trays. So I'm going to brush the antique wax on and then wipe off the excess. Right now I'm doing the entire outside. And then once those are dry, I will do the entire inside of my trays as well. So while those trays are drying, we will finish painting our four posts or corner posts for our lanterns and then let those dry. Then I'm just using wood glue, putting some on the bottom of the stick of tumbling tower blocks and a little bit 
on the two sides that will fit in the corner there. So just getting it all the way flush into the corner and against the bottom. And I just kind of held it for a minute until it had latched on enough to then let it dry completely. And we will do all four of the corners of our bottom tray. Then I'm taking one of these glass pillar candles and just wrapping around some of this burlap and gingham ribbon that I found at Hobby Lobby. And then we're gonna set this in the middle of our lantern as well as some greenery. Now you'll see here in just a second, my top tray I did not glue on. I just kind of set it down over the four posts, kind of like a hat. And uh, you could definitely glue it if you wanted to, but I didn't think it was necessary. DIY 5 is going to be a mixed media heart sign. I was looking through all my scrapbook paper stash and loved these colors of paper also for spring as well as the embellishments, a metal word from Dollar Tree. And I am starting with this hanging wood heart from Dollar Tree. So once I removed the jute twine hanger, I'm gonna paint the entire back with my ballet slipper chalk paint. And I'm also going to use this color on the edges going all the way around. This is just so our project looks nice and finished on the back. Now this blue paper is really pretty with the little butterfly and flowers on there. And so I had marked on it where I needed to trim it so that when I Mod Podge it on this heart, it's gonna line up right there. I pretty much did the top two thirds of the heart with this blue paper. And then we're gonna put that pink flower paper on the bottom third. Apply some matte finish Mod Podge and then we will um, Mod Podge that blue paper onto this top part of the heart. I did trim off most of the excess scrapbook paper there from the top of the heart. And then turning this back over, I am going to do another layer of the Mod Podge on the top of the paper and then let that dry completely. Then while that is still drying, I'm gonna put some Mod Podge on that bottom third of the heart. And we're going to put this pink flower paper down on that lower section. Same thing, smooth it out, put some Mod Podge over the top, and then we're just gonna let our heart dry completely before we trim off the excess paper. And to do that, we will again use our Fiskars fingertip knife. This little knife got quite a workout in this video, but we're just going to go around the back side of our heart and get all of that paper so that our edge is nice and crisp. Once we get the paper cut off, we will also use that little sander and go around the edges just to make sure everything is nice and flush and looks finished. I did have a number of other embellishments that I could add to this heart. I liked that um, teal flower, but I felt like it kind of got lost. Um, that comes on a spool. It's actually a ribbon from Hobby Lobby. You can cut the individual rosettes off. I did like that butterfly, um, but I also found in my stash this burlap ribbon. So I really like that. So I'm gonna glue a strip of that across where the two scrapbook papers meet and just running a bead of hot glue across there and then placing the piece of ribbon on there. We'll let that dry and then once it is dry, we'll trim the edges. Still wanted to use that flower, but I don't think it was gonna work out. I did get this 
uh, galvanized word blessings from Dollar Tree, I believe last Easter. So keep your eyes open when um, the Easter stuff comes out again. This cardstock sticker I thought was nice to match with that burlap ribbon um, just to bring another dimension and to kind of separate the two sections of the heart. So here's what I mean. These little rosettes, they come on a ribbon spool and they're attached to tulle and you can just cut them apart and then trim off that tulle. I decided to use that pink heart because it stood out a little bit more. And then I'm also going to add this cardstock sticker of a blue butterfly. And this was just the perfect amount of dimension for that top right corner. Next, we'll take a little bit more of hot glue and glue down our galvanized metal word blessings. And then flipping it over to the back with a pair of sharp scissors, trim the ribbon and the big cardstock sticker to be flush with the edge of our wooden heart. I really liked this and thought it was pretty, but I felt like it was missing something. So taking some of my jute twine from Walmart and just very slowly having a thin bead of glue as close to the edge as I could get it, I'm going to outline my heart now just with one layer of this jute twine. And I do love how this turned out. I feel like it really added to the finished look of this. Then taking a few more of those beads, I'm gonna string eight of them on the hanger that had originally come on the heart sign. And this will be our finishing touch. If you love budget home decor DIY videos like this, I hope you'll consider giving this video a thumbs up. It really does help me to grow my channel and bring you new videos each and every week. DIY number six was one I was very excited to make. I'm using some of these black wrapped canvases, the Home Quads Stencil from Magnolia, and two five gallon paint sticks. So taking two of the paint sticks, I'm just going to trim them with my saw right at the corner there before they start to narrow. And we're gonna set those aside. Now, these black canvases are eight inches by eight inches. You can see that before I did anything else to them, I gave these each a coat of the glossy clear spray. And then once that's dry, I'm taking my fingertip knife and I'm cutting on the back outside the staples. So what I'm basically going to do is I'm going to make a reverse canvas. So we're taking the canvas off the front of the frame and we're then going to reattach it behind the frame because I love those wood frames and I want to be able to see them in this project. So you can see before I completely remove the canvas from the frame, I'm taking a pencil and I'm tracing around the outside of the frame so that when I cut the canvas, I'm going to cut a little bit inside the lines and then I may have to trim a little bit more, but by cutting slightly inside the lines, my canvas should definitely fit on the back of the frame. So this one fits pretty good. It just needed one more trim. Now I'm going to go so far as to remove all the excess canvas from the back of the frame. And I am going to remove the staples as well. This is very soft wood. So if you have this staple remover, which is amazing, it's not too hard to dig down a little bit and be able to get those staples out. I just feel like this gives you a much cleaner finished product. Um, so to take the extra, you know, couple minutes 
to remove the staples is I think a really good idea. Then once we have all the staples removed, we're going to use our antique wax on the front, the inside edge, and the outside edge of all four of our frames. Same as always, brush on the antique wax, let it sit for a minute, and then use a paper towel to wipe off any excess. I would say this project would also look really nice if you painted the wood frames rather than using the antique wax. So feel free to modify this project to your um, preferences. I'm also gonna use that same antique wax on my two five gallon paint stick pieces on the front, the back, and all the edges as well. Now, once our frames are fully dry, we can reattach the canvases, like I said, to the back. And when you go to lay them down, you may see that you do need to trim them a little bit more. You will definitely want a staple gun for this um, process. You're going to do one in the middle like I did and then stretch it and go across the other side. And I just kept doing that. I kept doing a staple, flipping it around, pulling one the opposite direction, and then I'm kind of pulling in towards the corners. And this takes a little bit of time, but like I said, if you have a staple gun, mine is just, I think, from Walmart or maybe Lowe's, um, but you're not using it for anything super heavy duty, and this wood, like I said, is pretty soft. I don't think a regular stapler would work. You're definitely gonna want a, um, handheld staple gun. So I'm going to do this same thing to all four of my canvases so that I get a really nice black canvas with a beautiful wood frame. Now at this point you can make this yours. You can paint pictures in the four canvases. You can use paint markers to hand write some words. I love these stencils. This is one set. They're called the Home Quads. Each stencil is about six inches square. So that is perfect for the eight by eight canvases, then uh, turning them around and making a reverse canvas. I'm just gonna put all four of these in the four little spots um, that we made here with the canvases. And I love the white chalk paste on the black background. Now, originally I was going to make this um, to look like a window, but do you remember those four or those two um, five gallon paint sticks? We are gonna see what I decided to make instead of just a window. Once we get all four of our sentiments chalk pasted onto our uh, four reverse canvases, we will then um, glue these together with some wood glue. So here's our four stenciled canvases and you could leave them as is, hang them or maybe build a little base that, to make them stand. But like I mentioned, I decided to glue my four together in a quad like this, kind of in a window shape. So first I'm gonna glue the top two together and you can see I'm trying really careful to wipe away any excess glue because I don't want that to show on the front of my project. Then we'll do the same thing with our bottom two uh, canvases. And then once our two pairs are dry, we'll go ahead now and glue our two pairs together so that we have all four of them glued in a square. Okay, so now coming back to our two paint sticks, I am measuring six inches from the end, and I'm going to glue these to the top 
to look like the roof of a house. So at that six inch pencil mark, I'm gonna have that right at the corner of the top canvas frame and just putting a little bit of wood glue. I'm gonna line those up and then it's too big to fit in the camera frame. You'll see it in the finished product, but at the very peak, um, the two are going to uh, meet up together to form the peak of the roof. Just to reinforce the back, I'm just gonna take two more paint sticks. One, I'm gonna glue vertically right down the center, and then two more small pieces. I'm going to glue there between the top and bottom canvases. Like I said, just to reinforce our finished product so that it does not break. Now taking a little wreath, I'm gonna take some more of this boxwood greenery from Walmart that I used in the birdhouse project. And I'm just gonna start sticking it in the wreath all going one direction until I have it as full as I'd like. I did show using some hot glue, but after that first piece, I just started poking it in, making a little space with my fingernail and then uh, poking in the individual pieces of the greenery. So I thought that was a perfect addition to the top of this little house sign. So this is pretty large and I just love that little wreath hanging there up at the top as well. I hope you like it too. Thanks again so much for joining me today. Please let me know in the comments which of these projects was your favorite and we'll see you next time. Take care.